a very good practical real, real points. Okay, if there's no further questions or comments, uh, if I can move the recommendations in paragraph two of the report, that's agreed. Excellent, and then we're on to public question time. And uh, Mr. Wendell has got a couple of questions for us again. Good afternoon, committee. Um, the first question is in relation to one of the previous questions I asked last time about Greenway Road in Brancourt. They have two bus routes, supposed to run on a half hour frequency. This is the 61 and the X1. They do run a half hour frequency, but they can't in each direction within a minute of each other so we could both turn up together. So is there a way they could maybe change it so we have made a combined 15 minute frequency for this? Okay, thanks for that, Mr. Lennon. And obviously we'll give you a more detailed response. But um, I'm told that both of those services in the current deregulating environment are operated on a fully commercial basis by those bus operators. So they're operated at the autonomy of those two bus companies and they're responsible for the scheduling. Um, apparently because of the way competition law works, it would be very difficult for them to market those services jointly unless they engaged in what's called a quality partnership, which is a sort of um, legal instrument under the Transport Act of 2000 that they could sort of look at, that could then mean that they could have a balanced time timetable in that part of the world. Um, so, whilst that's something that uh, would need to be addressed to them, we're happy to pass your question on to them and they can perhaps sort of come back to you as well. I think you've got another question. Okay. Question two. Okay. Mobile ticketing. Um, some operators for the trains accept the mobile tickets. Now, a key example, again, for this, went to run forth by train on two different routes last week, went from Kirby round by Wigan and Warrington to Runcorn East. They, that way, accepted the mobile ticket. But when we came back, go the other way, obviously by South Park Pen, Liverpool Central, Mersey Rail, they accept the mobile ticket. I mean, is there any way we could do this and change this at all or not? Um, question slightly different to the one I was informed of. Um, oh, so the, to the answer that I've got is, is slightly different, uh, Mr. Wendell, but we'll give you that as a detailed, um, a detailed um, response. Uh, in sum, uh, the questions that you, you've asked, obviously about where we're up to with Mersey Ferries, we are looking to move Mersey Ferries to a smarter ticketing option, but so far we've been focusing on the um, the transport modes that have the greatest number of usage, hence why we've done a lot on buses and on rail. Where we're going with um, Mersey Rail is it is very much part of our long-term plan. So rail pass tickets, the sort of season tickets that we have available um, on Mersey Rail, are now um, on kind of um, on the cars. So that's kind of a step in the right direction. And we're actually working with Transport for the North and their programme Smart in the North of how we can move all of the railway tickets on Mersey Rail and other rail operations onto a fully smart card, uh, world's card platform. Thank you. So, sorry about that, Leo. I've got the other question. I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. It's honestly not a problem, but uh, we'll get you those as well. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay. Okay, uh, item 6, decisions and statement. Uh, we haven't received any for this time. Uh, and we're on to AOB. I'm going to bring the in very quickly because there was a, a very sort of uh, contemporary announcement you wanted to make, Gordon. Yeah. 
Um, that was in the Parliament last night. You were saying you were giving that information out this morning, and that's just come through. So I think that's exceptionally good news that the bids we put forward um, have, in the main, been uh, been received well. Uh, well done to the, the officers involved. I'm hopeful that this is going to be making their life a lot easier for a number of people in the future. Absolutely, with that kind of all the kind of thoughts and sentiments there. Accordingly, go. Um, the other bits of AOP I was going to mention is that it's our last meeting of the year, hence why it's been a slightly shorter meeting than we usually have. Um, and obviously, when we get to the end of the municipal year, um, we already become aware of some people that maybe sort of stand down from raising travel or kind of local authorities accordingly. So it's always a good opportunity to say thank you and a farewell to some, some good friends and some good comrades because there's two very significant people that aren't standing down for, from raising travel um, this time. Um, first of all, Keith Roberts, uh, one of our uh, members from St Helens, who's been with us for about four years now, uh, Keith, here at Mayors of Travel. And uh, most recently, you've been our lead member for Ferries, um, accordingly. Um, I genuinely want to say thank you on behalf of the whole organisation for all the hard work that you've done, right, because um, you're a really, really good team player. You know, you're one of those people that we can always depend upon. Not just to turn up, because sitting in a seat is easy at the end of the day, isn't it? But actually kind of get stuck into the work and actually have a really good, hard-working and thoughtful contribution. And um, when I think about some of the things that you've done most recently, you've been the lead member that has first and foremost overseen the start of the procurement of a brand new Mersey ferry, and you've also been the lead member that's overseen the process of finding a good long-term home the existing Royal Daffodil vessel. So genuinely, that is one of many sort of examples, I'm sure, from your um, career in public service of where you've had a real impact and will have a real lasting legacy. So from our perspective, uh, thank you for everything you've done here and we want to wish you the very, very best for a long and happy retirement for you and all. Um, the next very, very good friend um, that's sort of um, standing down this time, um, I mean this with all sincerity when I sort of say I think he's a real Mersey travel institution, um, because I can't think of anyone who is a better ambassador for this organisation, and that's obviously uh, Councillor Ron Abbey, who's been with the organisation for now, um, it's had to come up to 16 years that you've, you've done uh, at, at Mersey Travel. Um, and I always like to kind of think that if you cut Ron in half, like a stick of rock, it probably would say Mersey Travel right through um, the middle. Um, I think you've been absolutely integral to this organisation for many, many years, Ron. As you've said yourself, you've kind of held um, almost all of the positions here. And I always think kind of most significantly, you've been our lead member for us. Um, one of the things I think is brilliant about you, and similar about Keith actually as well, is you're that rare example of a politician who's genuinely an expert in his field. Because, um, as people may well know, you're a time sir bus driver. And why I think that's kind of really, really helpful is that you've been there, you've done it, you've got the t-shirt, and you know the ins and outs of this industry as well as anyone. And in an industry where, if I put it politely, Occasionally we have operators that might try and pull the wall over um, eyes and perhaps spin it in a certain way. You can't be sort of flummoxed, you can't be sort of um, confused by that, mate, because you know it inside out. And I always like to think about how um, you were able to kind of, in a very polite but very direct way, debate, um, what was his name, Bob Montgomery from Stagecoach. Remember we went to sort of Oxford and we had that. Like that very high level meeting with the fellow who's the managing director of Stagecoach and you were able to kind of tell him the ins and outs of ticketing and fares and actually give him a few own truths and beat him at his own game and I think that genuinely is one of your, your real sort of strengths mate and it's because of that um, I think you've been a real success in what you've delivered because particularly as lead member for BUS you've kind of led the team and led the effort on some really significant stuff that we've been uh, discussing and debating earlier. That 
significant increase in the number of people on buses doesn't just drop out of the sky, that comes about because of leadership. And particularly when we think about the success of the young person's fair deal and my ticket and how, frankly, by giving younger people a much better deal has actually doubled the number of kids on buses. That came about because of real strong political pressure, real strong political leadership of which you've been at the head of, mate. So quite often in politics, people sometimes say, well, what impact have you really had? Genuinely, mate, you can go back and say, I doubled the number of kids on buses and you've made a real impact in people's lives. And I hope you've been as proud of that as we are as an organisation, uh, mate. But the other great thing about you as well is that um, you're a real, real team player. I think one of the things that you never fail to mention at any meeting, and this isn't because it's a standard line, it's because you genuinely mean it and believe it, is actually how important the team is behind you. You always point out how fantastic our officer core are that genuinely make things happen. And that's not just out of courtesy, mate, that's real leadership. That's a real captain's trait, mate. So, I always think that kind of sort of stands you out uh, accordingly as well. Obviously today is your last meeting and I think you know, we're all sad that you won't be here next time. But actually, let's turn it round. We should be really, really, really thankful we've had you for 16 years, mate, because you've done a hell of a lot to make a big difference, mate, because you're a real good friend to all of us in this chamber, all of us in this organisation. But you know what? You're an even better friend to the travelling public of this region. So. From all of us, you will always be really, really welcome here at Mersey Travel Night. And thank you for everything you've done and all the very, very best for the future, mate.
15 years that I've been, that's what, that's what this organization has evolved. People come, people go. The main core of the thing of this organization is to get better and make it better for the children of the public. And what do you mean if you care? That's something I've always done about being a politician. I care, and I don't think decisions I make don't just impact upon the people out there. They impact upon me as well, so you make the right decisions every time. But once again, can I thank you all for your kind words and your support over the years.